Greetings to everyone in the name of Jesus. Saints, listen, we just want to say that we love you so much, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I tell you what. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I tell you what. I'm excited to be with you again. Amen. In the land of the living. Amen. In the land of the living. I tell you what. Um, I want to bring you an encouraging word. Might not be long, all right? But I want to bring you an encouraging word to let you know these comforting words. Now, if you're really born again, when I, when I tell you these comforting words, you're going to be excited. Amen. If you're really born again, and if you really love the Lord, and if you've really been doing things the way that I would desire for you to do, thank you, Holy Ghost, for going before this podcast. If you've really been doing things the way the Lord desires for you to do, then guess what? You're going to be excited. Uh, please forgive me for this, for the music, the loud music. Let me, let me try to recap what I said. Um, what I was saying was, if you, if you, really uh, are born again then I have some news for you and this news is going to excite you amen if you're really born again if you have really been tried by the fire or if you are really being tried by the fire this is going to excite you what I'm about to tell you if you really are doing the things for Abba from your heart and if you're really trying to please him and not yourself this is going to excite you what I'm going to share with you and that is God's got it all under control amen God's got it all under control amen and that should make you super glad amen because it's one of those things where uh, there are things that we go through in life sometimes we don't even understand what we're going through we just don't get it Amen. And sometimes the Lord just won't tell us. He's just like, I want to see if you're going to keep my word while you're going through. I want to see if you're going to trust me while you're going through. And if this is you today, trust God. Amen. While you're going through. Because it, he has it all under control. Let's walk on water. Hallelujah. It's going to be Genesis chapter 1. It's going to read like this. says, in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. So obviously if he was there in the beginning, then he is someone that we can trust. He's someone that knows it. He's someone that has everything under control. Look at what he did. It said, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So he's speaking and things are happening, right? His desire is coming to pass by a spoken word, right? So it says, and God saw the light. So he's looking around to see what is needed. Now, if he's looking around the earth to see what is needed, and then he's speaking what he sees is needed, why in the world do we feel like he's not looking around our situation and speaking what is needed? Sometimes we can complain and say, I don't want to go through this trial anymore. I don't want to go through this tribulation anymore. Do you not believe that God, our Father, is looking around your life and speaking what is needed? And sometimes, I know we don't like it, but sometimes what is needed is a redo of a trial. What is needed is a redo of a tribulation. Why? Maybe we failed. Okay, the last, or maybe we just didn't, maybe we opted out of the last, or maybe, you know, you never know. But I tell you this, something I have learned, that every trial is going to come with a level of knowing, more of a level of knowing, all right? More of a level of understanding, and more of a level of wisdom. If we choose not to get the understanding, if we choose not to get the knowing, and if we choose not to get the wisdom, these three things are going to call us, cause us to elevate. And the only reason we're elevating is not to toot toot to our horns. We don't elevate to rub shoulders with brother, rub shoulders with sister and say, hey, look where I am. We elevate to help others. That's it. 
we elevate to help others. And the reason the Lord can sometimes reorder a trial is because we didn't get the knowing, we didn't get the wisdom, we didn't get the revelation of it, okay? And then if we didn't get that, then he, because he wants us to have that, because how else, why else would the Lord want us here if we're not going to help someone else? You know what I'm saying? So if we don't get the, the the revelation and the knowing, the wisdom of the trial, sometimes the Lord can reorder that thing. Amen. So if he's looking around in the beginning and seeing what need be and speaking it, then he's looking around in your life, my life, and seeing what's needed and then speaking it. Amen. A lot of times we can blame the devil. Oh, devil this and devil that. And please don't let, please don't think that I'm ta- I'm get, I'm uh, letting the devil off the hook. That's not the case. But what I am saying is that many times we can blame the devil and it's not him at all. Amen. Now, he loves when the Lord orders a trial for you or order a trial for me because that means he can get in somebody or whoever he want to get in and he can really show his natural. Now, he loves that. All right. But he can't himself, unless we've been turned over to the enemy, he can't himself order a trial and just put us through it as we see with Job. He had to get permission to test Job. Amen. So the, he has the permission from Abba. So with that being said, if you're going through something on today, I want you to trust God and know that he has it all under control. Amen. Uh, I was thinking before I got on, you know, there are so many times in our life where, you know, sometimes when we were young, uh, you might have played the trust game with your friend. They're like, turn around and when you lean back, I'm going to catch you. And they catch you for the first two times and you catch them three times. And then when it's your third time to be caught, they just let you hit the floor or they let you hit the pavement, right? Well, there are several things in our lives, a little first little relationship or third or fourth relationship with a man or a woman, okay? And this person said they really love you or they really love you. And you know, you can tell it in their face that they really love you. And then a couple of days later, you see them around the corner and they were somebody else telling them they really really love them well these type of things um you could be them fail all right and mom or dad says hey i'm gonna clean this up for you and you're all tensed up ow 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 them busted your kneecap wide open okay and not so open until you have to go to the er but you know just a little blood and mom or dad says hey i'm gonna put this on there you're like no 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 and they're like it's not gonna burn it's not gonna burn and so you you calm down and once they put it on there it burned and it burned you're like all right well little small things like this uh being there after school and i'm and i'm i'm giving um i'm giving uh illustration and examples from the youth up because not, i'm not saying these things happen to me but just giving examples off the top of my head from from a kid up okay these are things that some of us probably could have went through okay being there at the school, mom or dad says, hey, I'm going to be there to pick you up. You After school, all the friends are gone, all the buses are gone, everybody's gone. Where's mom and dad? Mom, mom probably ran late, dad probably ran late. They came a little bit later, maybe 30 minutes later. There you are with all type of, uh, all type of uh, uh, ideas in your mind of what could have happened to mom, dad, auntie, your guardian, or whoever it was. Amen. And, uh, and we don't see it. We don't know it. We've just, we st- we've been living life, okay, young minds and stuff like that and before we know it okay it it, it teaches us okay it, it, it around this area of our lives and age of our lives it begin to teach us uh how not to trust amen it begin to teach us how not to trust we can get up to adolescent age and friends uh you could friends got a new car or something and and they promise you a seat in the front uh we're going to the game tonight yay can i ride everybody want to ride but they're like no i only have enough room for three people and this one's going that one's going that one's going with me and you were one of them well you didn't got you so happy you done got ready for the game right and now you're at the meeting spot and friends cars are already full and you're like wait a minute you said i had a spot well you know i'm sorry things change uh but maybe you can get a ride with such and such uh but i'm sorry i'm gonna go with these that i have you know what i'm saying just little let down after little let down after little let downs now that's not to say that we haven't had great things to happen to us right uh, mom and dad say hey you can't go to the game at the 
the last minute they say, hey, you can. You know what I'm saying? That's not to say you, you get the thing that you wanted for Christmas or you get the thing you wanted for your birthday. Okay. And, and you, your friends get to come over and spend the night. So that's not to say that great things didn't happen. But it is to say that there are things that the enemy can kind of use uh, on us as mortals. To cause us to to distrust, to not trust, and then as we get of age, uh, there's this person or people tell us, "Hey, you can trust God. God's never failed. He's never lied. He's never this, and He's never that." And it's easy with the mouth to say, "Okay, okay." Since I feel this feeling and it feels great, I feel like God is around me. I feel like God is with me. Okay, I'm going to trust God. But sometimes we could be like unto the children of Israel trusting God when things are good and then when things are bad not really trusting them anymore amen and I don't want that to be said to be you and I how many know God has brought us from a mighty long way and he has showed up and showed out on our behalf more than once more than twice more than three times amen and with that being said he is the same God yesterday today and forevermore and he don't change amen he don't change. Amen. And so with that being said, his word to is steadfast. His word is unmovable. His word is abounding. Amen. And it keeps abounding. And as long as you and I can catch the wisdom that is in him that we live, it's in him that we move, and it's in him that we have our being as sons and daughters of God. As soon as we can catch and get the wisdom, as soon as we can catch it, get it, and understand it, and keep it, and retain it, amen, we can move forward. We can believe, although all those things, and, and don't get me started on the things that can happen when we're adults, amen, and still things that happen that cause us not to trust the next person, amen. But with that being said, God is God, and he doesn't change. His word doesn't change, amen. We don't go to the word one day and come back and it say something different, amen. His word is forever settled. And if you say, Lord, I need some type of stability, I'm telling you, then this is the stability that you need. Amen. Because this is going to stabilize us from the inside. How many know there are those of us that need to be stabilized from the inside? Hallelujah. We need to know God from the inside first. Hallelujah. We need to experience him from the inside. We need to allow him to come in and clean up. Hallelujah. We need this. Because I keep saying that the day is, is dark. Amen. And the Lord is looking for those lights that will shine. And I believe I'm talking to some of you. Amen. I believe I'm talking to some of you. And it's time to understand that God has it all in control. If we do not understand it right now. Amen. We're going to be sorry that we waited too late to try to get the wisdom. Get the knowledge. Get the revelation that God has everything under control. Amen. When I tell you that you are so special to God, it doesn't matter who you are. You are vitally important to God. Now I'm, I'm going to go ahead on because the, the, the picture came. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead on and let you know what the picture was. The picture looks like this. It's a swimming pool. And there is a shallow end, there is a midsection, they're about five feet, and there is a deep end, about 12. And I see this kid, it's a boy, and this boy is invincible. This boy knows that God loves him, this boy knows that his parents love him, he does. And so this boy jumps off in the deep end on the 12, on the side of the 12 foot, you know, about eight, seven or eight, jumps off into the water. This, and, and there's hardly nobody in the water. So this is going to show um, someone that is taking the scriptures and they're not utilizing them correctly. Amen. Because just knowing God got all in control, we are not supposed to charge God foolishly. And just like the devil said, if these stones be made bread, uh, if you be the son of God, uh, make these stones bread. Or just like the devil told Jesus to cast yourself down and the angels going to lift you up and things like this. 
with, with Jesus knew because of the wisdom, knowledge, and revelation that that was foolish. Right? So it's foolish for us to be that kid that just jumps off, okay, the deep end over there. And just because we know God got out of control, we know parents love us, we know this, we know that. It's still, it's still foolish to do that. Amen. It's still foolish to do that. And how do we do that? We do that with just living life like we have um, we have a pass to everything God has said in his word. I want to give a small testimony. My nephew, which when I said that, he came to mind. But I wasn't talking about him. My nephew at the time, <clears throat> I think he was about maybe around that age. Yeah, maybe about seven, six or seven. And, but, it, but at this point in time, we were all in the pool. It was about five of us. And we kept telling him, you, you have to stay over here by the steps because this is the deep end. So you got to stay over here by the steps. And there were, we were watching him. You know, there were those of us watching him. But some kind of way, that little character got, he, I don't see that, that little character got out the pool. That's what it was. He got out of the pool, so we were like, okay, he's out of the pool. But we were still talking and carrying on and things like this. Now, he's out of the pool at six or seven years old. So, obviously, you you about know how to conduct yourself. You about know how to conduct yourself. And maybe he was a little younger than that. Maybe like five or six, something like that. But you about know how to conduct yourself, you know, especially while there's all of us out there. So, he gets out of the pool. And he's like, I want out. So we let him out. He goes around the edge. Now we're still watching. And he's appearing that, yeah, he's done with the water, right? So we're just talking and talking and talking. And after a while, I I hear this noise. Bloop. I mean, clean. It was a clean jump. Now what, what he did was he went out he went on the opposite side of the pool, still the deep end. He was tired of hearing that no 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 we let's stay over here because the water's deep. He went on the opposite side over there and jumps in. Okay. And all I heard was bloop. I looked. Now I didn't even look in a in a any any excitement because I just it was the sound was so quick and so um fast it was so fast until I'm like I, I can't I couldn't hurt that so when I look I didn't see anything now when I look I wasn't looking for him I just looked to see what the, what the little sound was and I didn't see nothing the water wasn't disturbed or anything right and the it, was, it had the it, it had the big God. That had me to look again. Amen. It had to be God to have me to look again. And I, and everybody's still talking and laughing and everything. And I look again. And I, and don't ask me how I saw, I saw one finger. I saw one of his little fingers just a smidgen above the water. I guess he had, he had floated up to the top. Thank God he was holding his breath. And I saw one of his, just a little pinch, maybe an inch of his finger above water. Not even his whole body, just a finger, just the top part of his tippy top of his little finger. And when I tell you I jolted toward that boy, and when I did that, it startled the others that were in the water. It's like, what, what, what? And I was, I wasn't going to say his name. I ain't going to say his name, man. I ain't going to say his name. <laughs> But I was like, where's, where's, where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? And by that time, the Lord helped me to bring him up out of the water. Well, let's say that day he learned that you can't be in the deep, my brother. Amen. You can't be in the deep. Amen. 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 And so I believe, it is my belief that his mom put him in swimming lessons and he knows how to swim now but at that time uh he did not amen and so 
he learned that day that when we say no, that means no. But that could have been fatal. You understand how quick that could have been fatal. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm so thankful that the Lord let me see him that day and to get over there real quick and get him out of that water. Amen. Get his little self out of that water. Well, I said that to say is back to the example that I saw, which was sometimes we can be kids that um, that feel like we're invincible. Right. Now, he was just adventurous. He just wanted to do it. He wanted to, you know, it. but we can be kids that feel like we're invincible. All right. And we can know the penalty of diving in deep water. We know the penalty. We know that we're supposed to know how to swim. We know all this stuff. But sometimes when we feel like that we can override because God is love and he's going to forgive me anyway. Sometimes when we feel like we can override, okay, who God is and what he has said, he has to show us a lot of times that this is not that and that is not this. Amen. And so... We all going through life. Amen. All of us have our struggles. All of us have uh, the things that, you know, we are working on. Amen. And with the Lord's help, we are more than conquerors. Amen. But he wants us to know, too, today that he has it all under control. So there is no need to be, uh, you know, there's no need to tense up. Just trust. Just trust him. Amen. Just trust him. No need, no need to tense up. It's different when you are riding with someone. I know this because I have a 17 year old. Amen. But I taught her how to drive. And it's different when you're teaching someone how to drive because you're going to have those tense moments. You might even have those moments where you say, put, 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 put over, put, 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 put over and, and go ahead and get out. I, I take the wheel, right? Yeah, we have those moments. But then as we keep going and as we keep going, now when I ride with her, I don't have to tense up, right? Because now I trust her to, enough to know that she knows how to drive and that the Lord is her help just like he's mine. Amen. And that she studied that thing and passed these little different tests. And now, you know, she's a driver. Amen. And so that's what I want to tell you. All the things that the Lord did in the beginning, all of the things and the ways he made all through the book of life. You and I, oh, it's, it's a little bit late in the game for us to be tensing up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when it comes to us needing aid and uh, there's an open wound there and the Lord is going to apply that, that anointing. He's going to apply a wine. He's going to apply a new wine skins and all these different things. And sometimes we can feel like this is going to feel good. It's going to feel good to be on the potter's wheel. It's going to feel good for uh, when the Lord applies the anointing. Do you know the anointing had come through suffering? Yes, the anointing comes through trials and tribulation that we have went through with the wisdom of the Lord and utilize the wisdom of the Lord and it gives us anointing. Yeah, so sometimes we can feel like that this thing is supposed to just be automatic, automatic, right? It's not. Amen. It's not because the Lord has to continue to keep us leveled off to know that if you get prideful, you're going to be the very one that I can't stand. He says that he don't like a proud look. Amen. He says, if I let you get prideful, you're going to be the very one that I can't stand. Amen. So he levels it out. When I bless you, I'm going to allow this, this, and this. That way you are blessed, but there's still things that, you know, things are happening, right? Things are happening around you. And the Lord does this for his name's sake, and he does it for us. Amen. I know sometimes we are children, and we cannot see it. I can't see why God is doing this. I can't see why he's doing it this way. If it was me, I would do it that way. But if it was you again, you would have been and sent your enemies to hell. Can I get a witness? If it was you again, you would have been and struck them down. They'd be dead today. Amen. If it was us again, we'd be and done some all type of stuff. Okay, with the judgment that we have. Amen. But thank God we are continuing to grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Amen. Growing in grace. Amen. Is going to cause us to give others more grace. Amen. When we, as we receive grace, it's going to cause us to give 
others more grace. Amen. And we're not going to cherry pick that thing and say, I'm going to give him grace and him grace, but her, her, and her, I'm not giving them grace. That means we didn't get it. Amen. Sometimes the old saints used to say, do you got good religion? Amen. They put you down there. Amen. And, and make you tarry for a while. Now, I didn't really come through. Uh, I believe we were just coming up as they were getting done with the tarrying age. All right. We're just coming through that thing. Uh, at an appropriate age perhaps when they were all ending the tearing thing but I heard about it amen my grandmother told me about it my parents told me about it preachers talk about it all the time that tearing before the Lord and how the older people used to get in there and work you know work with the people work with the folks until they receive the Holy Ghost and sometimes they say you got it and people be so tired of being down and they be like yeah I got it and then once they get up and do it something the old people be like no you ain't got it. Get back down there. Amen. Now nah, you ain't you, you ain't you ain't about got it. Uh go and get back down there. Amen. Go and get back down there. Well, I'm telling you, if we are ones that only give grace to certain people but don't give grace to other people, we need to get back down there. Amen. We need to get back down there and tarry some more for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because as we continue to grow in the knowledge and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, He begins to make these things known to us. He begins to give us the revelation of why it's so important. Amen. Many times it's so important to forgive those that don't need that you feel like that it's not worth forgiving them they've done so much try so much different dirty things i just feel like i can't forgive them do you know in that very instant right there that uncle hurt me or that that person hurt me when i was a little kid do you know in that instance right there the instance that we we don't want to forgive okay because this is just unbearable it's unbearable for you to believe that i have to forgive somebody that did this 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 and this Every last one of us have situations like this where we feel like we've been through something that was quite unbearable, something that was quite unnecessary. And no, you know, it's, it's, it's heinous for you to say that I need to forgive. But do you know it's in that? Mm -hmm. It's in that very thing right there that God gets the glory out of your story. Why? Because you didn't get bitter, because you didn't get angry, because you didn't, uh, you didn't turn from the word of God and start throwing stones. Amen. Throwing stones to kill, throwing stones to destroy. Amen. And with that being said, I know that it's a process. It is. Don't let nobody tell you that it's not a process. It's a process. To forgiving those that we feel like have really hurt us and did us bad. Amen. But when I tell you that the Lord is faithful to take us through that process. He's faithful to take us through it. Can I tell you why? Because he's not going to let you squat in that mess. He not. He And if you had a child and your child was sitting in mess. Would you let that child continue to sit in mess? No, you would not. No, you would not. Number one, disease and infestations and things like this can occur. Amen. Not just that, but that child can break out. Okay. And rashes and things like this because of sitting in feces. Not just that, but it can intra it, it can attract insects, bugs. Okay. And these bugs can be, uh, it can be detrimental to the child. Right. Not just that, but uh, you have these different governmental people that will come in now and take this child because you are not properly keeping the child because you are allowing it to sit in feces for so long. So, so long. Amen. So why in the world do we believe the Lord is going to allow, allow us to sit in mess? He's not. He's not. Amen. He's not. So, I'm telling you, is that very thing, God wants you to forgive that thing and let that thing go. Have you ever flown a kite? Oh my goodness. You let that, you unwind that kite and let that kite up on a windy day. Oh, you just feel like a million bucks and that kite just soar like that. Well, that's how God wants to do you. He wants, and, and, but sometimes when He goes to release the kite and you want the kite to fly up high and it just looks nice, right? But sometimes when he go to release 
us. We're, we're the ones that we're wound up on the stick. What's the stick? The stick is unforgiveness. The stick is hatred. The stick is malice. The stick is the stick is all these things that the Lord has told us to release. The stick is the world. When he says, come out and be separate and I'll receive you. The stick is the world. Amen. The stick can be, you know what the stick is in your life. The Lord wants to unwind you and he wants to fly you. Why? Because you're the city set on the hill that can't be here. He wants to fly you. You're his kite. And he's made you so beautiful. Amen. So beautiful. Crafted you from the inside out. And now it's time. He wants you to fly that thing. Amen. Amen. He wants you to get up there. Don't be tensed up. Me and you done talked about this before. There's no reason to be tense. Amen. No reason to be tense at all. Um, You already know how the anointing works. You already know what's, how it's going to be applied. You already know what situations is going to occur for me to apply this. You've had many wounds. Me and you, I've addressed many wounds of yours, says the Lord. Amen. We've been through many dark days together. I've walked you through the valley of the shadow of death. We've done that together. Amen. And even then, he's saying, fear no evil. So with that being said, now that I want to unwind you, now that I want to unleash you, now that I want to fly you, I still want you to keep these principles. What is the principle, Lord? The principle is, I have it all under control. Amen. You can trust me. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I don't know who needed to hear that. Amen. But I just believe it fell on ears that were needing to hear this message. Amen. I don't know what you're doing in your life or where you're going. Amen. But trust God and trust that he has it all under control. From your mind to your body to your soul. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Saints. Listen. We just want to say that we love you so much. I want you to have a beautiful Monday. In the name of Jesus. All the veterans. Look, we love you all so much for going to fight. Amen. You chose to fight. You chose to put your life on the line for this country. And so thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. We love you so much. And until next time, be blessed. In Jesus' name.